Winter Cut Day 67. All right, boys, we're gonna be freaking. That that was that was really energetic. I'm I'm trying to you know bring out the energy these days, right? It's back day, boys. We're going to LA Fitness for this back day. It's gonna be nice and juicy. We got the T bar row. Ah, yeah, we got the preacher curl. Well, potentially the preacher curl. I might do alternating dumbbell curls because they look cool. Uh, we got freaking lat pull downs. I don't know which one I'll do first though, to be honest. Because here's the thing: lat pull downs are super fatiguing. So they're gonna make the rest of the workout slightly less effective. But who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll try a different order. I don't I don't even know. I just know that if I the, the number one thing I really want to work on is my lats. Like I feel like they're pretty good in most poses, but I definitely could use some more width overall. So you know, hyper prioritizing that would make sense. But if we're talking about overall growth, I still stand by the you know the fact that. The least fatiguing things should go first in your workout, and then the most fatiguing things should go last. So that way, the growth is, you know, less downward and, and more, or the stimulus, rather, is, is, is less, you know, crappy, and it's more even throughout the whole thing, right? Because if I do deadlifts first, right, which I wouldn't do deadlifts, right, just because I've already had my fun. I did 405 beltless without straps or anything. If I do deadlifts first, Super fatiguing, not, and even if I like deadlifts, let's say I like deadlifts, super fatiguing, the rest of the workout's going to be way lower quality. But here's the thing, if I save deadlifts for last, I'm only going to be slightly weaker for that because all the other workouts that I did that were more isolation on the biceps or whatever, they're not that fatiguing. Deadlifts are, you know what I'm saying? So what's going to have more of a damper on the rest of my workout, bicep curls or deadlifts? You feel what I'm saying? Or even just a general shortened position movement. Right, shortened position movements don't take up much energy, but that's the thing. Lat pull downs, bro. That's a pretty lengthened position movement. Now today, I'm gonna try to flip the script on that and go with really contracting on the lat pull down. I really want to try to contract because it is those lower thirds of the range of motion. I didn't realize this because I've been listening to uh, this one podcast. It's like the Chris and Paul show or something. And these guys are super science based. They're really freaking smart, and uh, they—they're. I'd, I'd be willing to say they're definitely the smartest guys right now in terms of, uh, you know, exercise science and just general physiology, like when it comes to muscle growth. But yeah, anyway, though these guys, these guys are great, and they were talking about how, uh, and I'm learning new things every day, right? A lot have best leverage from around 40 to 60 degrees is where they can produce a crap load of force, right? So that got me thinking, dude, it's even, I mean, listen, they have great leverage from 90 and below, but dude, that makes sense. Think about it. When do you feel your lats the most? I mean, a lot of guys would say the stretch, bro. Yeah, the stretch. Let's be real. The lats aren't doing much work up here. No leverage to produce force. They're not doing much. From here and below, is where you see guys saying, oh, man, I, I do pullovers, man, to feel the lats, bro, to pre-exhaust and engage. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm making fun of these people so much, but you guys get what I'm saying. You guys get what I'm saying. Where do you feel lats the most? In the contracted position. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense. We are having a coffee today. We're not having two. Who said we need two coffees? That, that was me yesterday. Today, I'm a new changed man. Not really. Uh, but, but I will definitely have, um, Starbucks later because I have a gift card for like 15 bucks that I got. So definitely something that's good. Although when it comes down to it, bro, when it freaking comes down to it, let's be real. What's better Starbucks or Dunkin? I'm going Dunkin every time because what has better sandwiches? Dunkin. What has better donuts? Dunkin'. What has generally the same kind of drinks? Dunkin'. So, you know, you're going to get more consistency and more overall quality with Dunkin', but there's nothing wrong with Starbucks. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. So, this thing is impossible to close.
All right, so we got coffee in the Believe mug. Anyway, guys, let, let's, let's think. Let's think. Let, what are we going to approach today's training session with? I'm thinking we're going to do, like I said, lat pull downs, really focusing on the lower third, that big contraction. I, and here, you know what? You want to know how I'm going to do that? I'm not going to do any mind muscle connection BS where I do 80 pounds and just do real slow. What I'm going to do is explosively pull to just get through that first half and then really, really focus on the all the way down. Really. Uh, like that, you know what I'm saying? So we got that. We got horizontal hammer strength throws. You know the one with all the plates on it? You go, boosh, 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 and it looks all cool. And then we got some kind of curl, some kind of wrist curl. We always do dumbbell, though, because I love dumbbell wrist curls. I think they're the best. And, yeah, anyway, uh, we get the creatine here. I'm going to take some salt, some honey, and that's going to be about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the gym. So I'm pretty sure you get the idea. We we'll start with freaking heavy wrist curls. I don't know how much I'm gonna do today, but we'll see. I had 95 on my mind, but I've never done that before, so. I think 50 is going to move well today. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm pretty impressed. That wasn't too bad. I might have to shift the goalpost, guys. My goal was 55 by like, I don't know, the end of next bulk or something crazy. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we could get 70 with how that felt. I'm, I'm hoping for a 70 pound dumbbell preacher curl. That'd be so cool. One arm, bro? My God. I'd have freaking cannons. Ooh. 
I don't even know if I matched the reps, but I'm not too concerned because obviously that was very close to failure, if not failure. So, plus, I mean, my right arm is, I don't know, my right arm is like about the same as my left, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it is a good idea to match them. That was pretty good. You know, especially when I'm going fighter, I like to just get a massively deep stretch. So, like on that set there, I really just emphasized that bottom position, really maximally stretched out, and uh, my elbow didn't pop, which was kind of weird, because usually my left elbow pops, and it's always popped pretty much, but no pop in there. So unique. But, uh, you know, there was this one like Brazilian funk song or whatever, from some edit that I saw with Jay Cutler, and I could not find the same version on any other platform. I looked on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, I couldn't find it. And so I found the non-slowed version and I just downloaded that off of SoundCloud. And then from there I uh, put it into Audacity and added slow and reverb until it sounded like the edit. And so that's some real commitment to <laughs> a random song you found with Jay Cutler in it. But anyway, let's go. Time to roll up the sleeve. <laughs> 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 I think that was two sets. I want to get in, uh, I mean, two sets has been working great for me, so what I'm gonna do now is just drop the hammer curls. I should be getting eight to 10 on hammer, but I don't know. I might be overestimating my strength on this, so I don't know, but. I usually do 45 for like six, I feel like. But I'm not getting full range of motion usually, so I don't know, maybe we'll just try to go for quality like five, even though it's five pounds less. Get like solid range of motion in that bottom, because that's where, that's where the brachialis is best leverage, so. That was pretty decent. I didn't mind that. I don't like going right to the other limb immediately. I take rest between limbs. A lot of people don't do that, but I think it's way better in terms of rep quality, set quality, if you actually take rest between limbs, because then literally you're allowing yourself to have higher levels of force production if you rest, even if it's not the same limb. Like if I do a deadlift and then I go right over to do a max bench press, my max bench is gonna be way weaker. So, even though I'm not using really the same muscles. So, if you guys get what I'm saying. If I do a bicep curl to failure and then I do triceps right after, it's gonna be a little bit weaker than if I were to take a rest. So, even between limbs, take rest. Oh, 
I'm gonna do two sets of hammer curls. I'm gonna keep this on the same weight. See what happens. I don't know. I, I hopefully, I hopefully will get a good amount of reps. I didn't get that many there, but it is what it is. I, I don't know. Maybe I should drop it. Let's just see. If it feels bad, I'll just go over and pick up a lighter dumbbell. Uh, it was only four, but I'm cool with it. Those reps all worked, so I don't have an issue with that. Let's take a little rest, and then uh, we'll freaking get back to it. I think next on the agenda we got probably some horizontal rows over there, and uh, then after that we'll do T-bar and a lap pull down. But it's nice having the accessories out of the way first. Honestly, it's convenient. Kind of looking forward to lap hold on, just going super heavy, seeing how it feels. All right, to the horizontal row we go. I think I'm gonna do single arm just because it looks cooler. Nice and cold. You know, I knew it was a good idea to switch to this over the Gatorade bottle. All right. We're just gonna ego lift today. We're gonna do five. See how it feels. Not even gonna lie, that felt pretty heavy. But, worst case scenario, it's too much, we'll just drop it. What's my hype song today, boys? I don't even know. I hate to say it, but Tom Platts ain't doing it for me right now. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Kevin Lavroni theme song, let's go. That was 
pretty cool. I'll have to watch it back and see if that was ego lifting, but to be honest, I hold myself to such a high standard on these movements that uh, even the slightest bit of cheating feels like ego lifting to me, so I was really trying to avoid it there. Whether it was ego lifting or not, I don't know. We'll see though. I'll have to watch it back. You guys tell me in the comments if that was ego lifting. And just because it's heavy doesn't mean it's ego lifting. If it's awful form with heavy weight, then that could be passed as ego lifting. I don't know why it feels heavier on the right. I think my left might be stronger. Whew. That was heavy. Time to drop it. It's off. Did you need all that shit? What? Did you need all that shit? <laughs> there you go. I, I just skipped through like a hundred songs to get to the one I like. I'm gonna throw this around like Branch Warren. Y'all know who that is? Y'all don't know about Branch Warren. That was actually not like Branch Warren, that was like Dorian Yates. Branch would just throw the weight. He'd yank it. He wouldn't even throw it, he would yank it. He would yank the weight. So, if you're gonna choose a training style, I'd recommend choosing the one that's the least injury prone, right? The only real way to get injuries in the gym, and this is just from kind of what I know, right? Is doing something that you cannot control. If you can't control an exercise, you're pretty much screwed. You're, you're probably going to get injured. But if you can control it, to really any degree, like if you can manage it, if it feels like a manageable weight, then you're probably good. Now, that goes for pretty much anything. Like some guys will get into Jefferson curls where they load their spine, right? Some guys will get into behind the neck press, right? And a lot of those exercises are dangerous, right? Just because people have it adapted to them. So. Whatever you're gonna do, adapt to it in a controlled manner, right? That's how you avoid injury. I don't even know if it's so much that my right is weaker, but I'm starting to realize that this arm goes more straight on and this arm kind of goes out a little more, like further away from my body. So I think that's what it is. But anyway, we're done with this. So I'm gonna move on to T-bar row if it's open. What's up? Do you and your video want to come see how many you can help me hit these for? Heck yeah. I gotta put these away real quick. Oh. More, more. Squeeze it, come on. Up. That was good. Did I, hey, did I do good on the spot? All right, you make it sure. Should have grabbed 80s. One more bulk, man. We'll be doing seven plates. We still got 
after this. We have this set. And then lap pull downs and back extensions. Big traps come from if you're doing side raises wrong. <laughs> Come on. Easy. Up. Squeeze it. Come on. Easy. Yes. You get the backpack glitch again. Let's go. Forearms looking crazy. I mean, even the non-backpack forearm still looks crazy. The pump is tangible. Somebody who is three foot nothing went on this machine before me. Actually, they might have been onto something. I need to like fold my He's up really high for stability. All right, that's actually really nice. I love the way that feels, but I think we can max it out. No issue. First try maxing out the back extension machine. Let's see. These not lift machines are always pretty good. They always have been. Whew. Yeah, they're just nice and smooth always. Let's see. That was very heavy. There's not a lot of people who could say that they train their spinal erectors with direct isolation work like that. I mean, everybody's got a back extension in their gym, but you know, not all not all machines are created equal. So some of them are gonna be low quality, some of them are gonna be high quality, and they're gonna bode well with your movement pattern, you know? And this one definitely does. Although I will say, that might have even have been too heavy for me, because Although I was getting a huge spinal erector pump, uh, that was a lot of weight. So who knows? Let's see, we might decrease it a little. I'm done with that. Uh. 
that right. You know, I strained my knee on something pretty stupid, like earlier today. And it's just very random. Like you expect, okay, while well, I'm in the gym, maybe if I go and do a 200 pound leg extension, maybe my knee would bust open or whatever. You know, that's, I mean, that's not gonna happen, but you get what I'm saying. You think maybe, maybe you'd get a little tweak or something. That's, that's more so what I mean. But when it happens, it's like when you go to pick something up, it's very random, it's very unexpected. He's like, when I go to pick something up, I'm not expecting to be like, oh man, okay, I gotta like brace for this and like warm up. You know, I just go to pick something up, you know? But in, in the gym, you know, you're so cautious, you're so overly cautious that you, like people really rarely get injured in the gym. Especially, like I said earlier, like you have time to adapt to exercises and stuff, and if you just are doing what you like and everything, you're gonna have injury resilience that builds up over time. But uh, yeah, sometimes at home it just doesn't apply. I think I'm gonna do 235, see how it feels. I know that the lap pull down weight honestly equates to this fixed pull down really well. So I don't know, you know, if it's gonna directly translate, but we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how easy this feels. So Ah we'll go two twenty. We'll go two twenty. That was heavy. Still worked though. So who knows? Maybe, maybe I should use even more body English than I already do. I doubt it though. So we have. Pretty good overall back volume here. More than the, you know, maximum required amount, so to speak, but I don't really care. Because that's the thing. The general rule is like six tests per muscle group, but like, and muscle group is usually a group of muscles that have pretty significant overlap, right? Kind of like front delts in a bench press, right? But people still count front delts as the shoulder muscle group. They don't actually count it towards like their chest volume, you know what I'm saying? So for chest, like that's a muscle group that has extreme overlap, obviously, because it's like three muscles, you know, or I know there's three divisions, but there's a lot of random muscles in there. You guys get what I'm saying? You know, when you do rows, no matter how you do them up here, down there, you're still gonna get some pretty significant overlap with like the lats and everything in the upper back. Um, so that's why they say, generally speaking, like six sets per back. But with like erector work, nobody ever does that. You know what I mean? You're not getting direct erector work if you're doing chest supported stuff like me. So anyway, let's get to the set. Drop it down to 175. Keep going. Jeez, that hits you hard real quick. I'm gonna go. 130 and do a really slow and controlled set just to burn out my lats and I think that'll be it for today today was a good back day I'd say this is the closest I've ever felt to being Dorian Yates 
So I'm happy about that for sure. You know, we did, I don't even remember, man. We just went heavy overall, right? Uh, kind of discovered that those unilateral rows that I was doing were a little uneven, right? Hence why I was weaker on the right side, which why would I be weaker on my strong side? Just because I'm rowing out here, I'm exaggerating, out here versus straight on. So, I don't know, who knows? Maybe we'll keep it in, maybe we'll just do both arms from now on, but either way. That's it, I'm calling it. Now we're gonna go pose. All right, boys, so we're doing a little pump check at a different spot than usual. I moved some of the bikes over just because nobody's using them. And uh, cleared out a little space for what we're doing. So we're taking this thing off, seeing what we got under here. Lighting isn't super impressive, but it will. Goodness.
time for some of the lap poses. Ah, that's a hard pose to hold. I don't know if I should be on my tiptoes for that, but you definitely want to make sure you're getting that X frame. And kind of, I heard this one, like bodybuilding coach, like posing coach. He said that uh, you want to stay on the outside of your feet when you stand for poses. So kind of instead of just being flat footed, you know, legs straight on, you want to put your feet kind of here and then kind of literally just stand on the outside. And I always did that a little bit, but I thought it was more so turning your feet out and then bending rather than just literally tilting your feet, which I don't know if you can see the difference from this to this, but that obviously turns on the quads, activates your calves a little bit, kind of makes the pose look better. But anyway, we're gonna get an overhead abdominals and uh, I'm pretty sure that's all the poses. All right, I will see you guys at home. All right, boys, it's nearing bedtime. I'm extremely tired. Today was a good back day. Really enjoyed it. Um, Overall, fantastic. I hit a bunch of random PRs, had some fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it again. I, uh... I'm excited to talk to you guys tomorrow for probably lots of walking day. So, yeah. And then the day after that, we get leg day. All right. Take care.